Hey everybody, how's it going? So just following up on a couple videos there I did a few weeks back about turning plain old shielded Cat6 network cable into a four channel audio snake. Now the problem for me was once I got everything down to a network cable, I had to break it back out again into XLR to get it through the studio's existing patch bay because I wired this place back up in 2003. And the idea of running analog audio over a network cable, believe me, wasn't even thought of back then. It's a still a pretty new concept even to this day. So to get network cable from the drum room into here, I've been pondering a few ideas over the last couple of weeks and finally looked at a spot that would be practical to drill between the drum room and the control room. And it was a little nerve wracking because these rooms are sealed really nicely. I can play the drums in here at two in the morning and not bother anybody. And the idea of drilling holes into my beautiful soundproof walls uh, really doesn't seem too appealing. Anyway, we did it. Here's that process. He's giving me a hand to uh, run network cable from the drum room into the control room here. I got a really cool system, figured out how to do it. so. Remember where the hell the grommets are. Oh, there's, is that a low grommet? Yes, I think. Is that a spot? Might be. Anyway, so we pulled, the, we pulled the panel off the wall here and we're gonna run some new network cables back behind here into the trap and then into the whole system here. All right, so we've got the panel removed and fortunately we're smart enough to leave some space back here. And so there's definitely gonna be enough room for, for the network to go, go cables to be drilled through. Now, a bunch of you guys were mentioning, hey, you should, you know, try pulling one of these cables through and see how that works. But it's like, we've got a lot of acoustic sealant there and it's really not gonna wanna move very well, especially, you know, because there's so many cables bundled here. So we're probably off better, we're probably better off just drilling through here. We'll see how it goes. Push through, yep, yep. Give it yep, there we go. Great, cool. Good. Yep, very. First, first hole drilled. Oh no. Yeah, so that's what we drilled all the wall right there. So there's our network cable and run through the grommet. We're just gonna come in back here. We got a bit of a base trap under there. And uh, we're not even gonna hook it up to the patch panel. They're just, we're just gonna wire them directly into, into the patch bay here because there's enough cable. If I wanna wire them into the patch bay, I can do that. But I'm like, yeah, let's just do it. Do it the easiest way possible with the least amount of dicking around. Less connections equals less stuff to go wrong. So as you can see, the hole is full of Get your mind out of the gun, you fucking degenerates. Uh, we're spelling it this way. See, that is a caulking gun. C-A-U-L-K. Not the other thing. Once again, low hanging fruit. I get it. Anyway, so we're running the network cables here. And I was originally going to run them to the patch bay that I, I custom built many, many, many years ago with all those very expensive connectors. Uh, but instead we're gonna run the network cable directly into the back of this, my red coat patch bay via these things. And I got these from Ward Beck and these are DB25 to RJ45. You get four per jack and that's great. So that'll be 16 cables, 16 mic cables total over just these two little connectors. And then that'll go in here and then one bank will go to the Neve 1073 OPX, and then the other bank will go here to the 500 series where I got four API 512Cs, an N Sonic N73, which is a 7, 1073 clone for dirt cheap, um, a very awesome tubule from Roll Music, and then a couple of Cranborns preamps, which are just absolutely slamming as well. So the big, uh, big idea here is just basically I get to disconnect all that cabling from those patch bays and get that all out of there and clean things up and just go down to four little network cables. Uh, can't wait to try this out and see how it works. Steve's working away here and uh, Steve's unsure if he should pump this hole full of or not. What do you think? Yes or no? Where the hell are we? Can we see there? Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah I'd say give this, us These things will get pushed back, right? They will? Yeah, and they'll go back through. You want me to, you want me to hook this up first and then we, then we pump it full of that's what I'm thinking. Let right. me do that then. Because I could show up like okay. later on. Okay, rule number one before pumping anything full of you should definitely buckle up for safety. And the, the last bit of injection. <laughs> Jesus. So for everybody watching at home, watch how Steve carefully injects the into the hole. Yeah, there's a bit of spillage. We got some white stuff linking out on this side of the hole. 
and we've sealed the hole again so um next step is button this back up and then try hooking it up here to the patch bay and hopefully it works good thing is we didn't really lose anything we've still got the original cables in place so if i need to put the xlrs back in, in on the patch panel i can do that here's the patch bay so we've still got six xlrs but now we have four network jacks rj45s and we still got our headphone notes as well so this will hold 16 mic cables they're balanced, so this should uh, carry phantom power. Shouldn't be any problems. Added bonus is we can lose some of these junction boxes now that we're out here. Now, the great thing is we might be able to just bypass the male XLR jacks altogether and go straight network cable into the patch bay. That's the plan anyway. Hopefully it all works. All right, so it's been a couple weeks. We've got the whole thing buttoned back up again and we sealed the holes with all of that white stuff. And I gotta say it worked absolutely great. There's no leakage whatsoever. The biggest sound leakage is still the sliding glass doors. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, I was nervous for nothing really. So ultimately now we have 16 channels of mic cable all going over four Cat6 network cables. And this has just cleaned so much stuff up in the drum room. And I am gonna pull out all the original XLR wiring back there and just clean everything right up. Now, normally when you're working with this system, you have to have male and female breakout boxes. Got my XLR males here. The XLR females are in the other room. That's what the mics are directly plugging into. But because we've got these Ward Beck RJ45 to DB25 converters, this is now my male breakout. These get plugged directly into my Redco patch bay, which is all DB25. The Neve 1073 OPX has one of these on the back because it's got a DB25 connector as well. I tend to prefer DB25s because it's just cleaner and it's cleaned things up that much more. The disadvantage to using DB25 is you're limited. You have to think in banks of eight channels because that's what these things take are eight channels at a time. Until now, because we've got the Ward Beck system here, we can do this four channels at a time, four for one, four for the other, so I can actually split things up that much easier, which is great. Uh, the bad news is Ward Beck went out of business a couple months ago, so these are no longer available. I got the last couple of these and that is it. Somebody bought up their whole stock. Um, I hope somebody picks up the design at some point and puts this out because I think this is a really valuable product. I think this is a great idea and it's definitely made my life a whole lot easier. So my thoughts after using this kind of system for a few weeks now, yeah, it's absolutely great. Um, I'm not, I haven't run into any crosstalk issues. I haven't noticed any noise pop up. Uh, this is pretty freaking rock solid. So if you're gonna look in, to wire up your home studio, you might wanna take a look at putting in a CAT6 system of some sort because you can not only use it for audio cable, you can still use it for network and HDMI and all kinds of stuff. So you can wire cameras in your studio, do whatever you want. It's really versatile stuff. And yeah, the XLR breakouts are fantastic as well. Maybe you can get lucky and find a couple of these, uh, but good luck. Oh yeah, and before I go, don't forget that the SMG cock blocker noise gate plugin is on sale till Thursday. It's going for only 37 bucks. On Thursday, the price goes back up to normal. So grab it while you can. Links for that are in the description below. Thanks for watching and until next time, praise Krum and crush your enemies.